It's the Wake Up Morning Show. Thought that you should know it. The Wake Up Morning Show. Wake up, wake up. It's the Wake Up Morning Show. Thought that you should know it. The Wake Up Morning Show. Wake up, wake up, rubber. It's the Wake Up Morning Show. Myself, you introduce yourself, and you know, I gotta borrow this one because what? Well, check this out. The champ is here. Yeah. The champ is here. Yeah. The champ is here. Yes, sir. Robert L. Dean, introduce our guests. Well, 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 well. Um, where do I begin with this 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 gentleman right here? Look at Rashad. Rich, Rashad. Hey, Coach Campbell. Um hey, this this gentleman is um, one of the best, and I, I'm being honest, one of the best coaches and, and, and a greater person um, that I've ever met in, in this track and field world. Um, he, he's, he's, he's one of the most wonderful people, easy, laid back. Um, he's an educator. He's a coach. He's a motivator. None other than the three-time Olympian um, was the world record holder at one point. The Tony Campbell. Minutes. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show. You had to throw that in there? Yeah. The world Because you, you uh, held the world record. It happened for yes. 20 minutes. Yes. It doesn't matter. A, you know, a record is a record. That's true. That's true. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold on. The record only lasted for 20 minutes? 20 minutes. <laughs> Man. Yeah. You, you, you know, I told you in my mind, in my dream, then I beat you. But it wasn't you. It but, wasn't me? No. There, okay. there were some other brothers on the East Coast that beat us. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was a relay. I mean, we, we actually destroyed the world record, and we were three-quarters of the way uh, around the track on our victory lap, and, and the announcer goes, and that world record you just saw just got broken. <laughs> wow. So the next heat? I uh, know. It's uh, Willie Galt. <laughs> Oh, Willie, Willie Galt, Willie Galt, and uh, those guys from uh, Tennessee wow. uh, broke it at uh, their meet in Tennessee, and we were at Mount Sac when we broke it. So. Now, now, wait a minute. Oh, so, man. what college did, were you in when you broke the record? What we were competing at Mount Sac, but I I went to USC. Yeah. You went to Trojan, USC, yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, you a Trojan? I'm a Trojan. Man, man. you know, I cut, like cut this. Right I, got, right I really got chill bumps. It, it don't come yeah. out red because I'm Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, um, you know, I just want to let you know that um, I, 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 I was looking at USC, but they, they did one thing wrong in recruiting me. Yeah, what's that? They missed my recruitment cut off by my mama. Oh, my mama go. said that <laughs> don't mess with by, mama. by <laughs> Friday, if they don't offer you a full scholarship, you going you to Berkeley go. because to Berkeley. Berkeley is giving you a full ride. Yes. I said, but Mama, Mama, you don't understand. It's USC. Right. It, it, it is in L.A. where the okay. family and everything okay. else. She, she said, we done set the rule. And do you not know that Friday was the deadline on Monday? They offered me a full scholarship. But my Mama said, you got to keep your word. I said, but go. we, I could have been with you. But she was teaching you know, principles. Yeah, yeah but, yeah. you know. Uh, praise the Lord. I thank God for my experience at Berkeley. Let, let me get this Berkeley. right. Berkeley. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> but you know what was crazy about that? Is that it's crazy it was. It was one of the most conservative colleges that, that I was that in that campus. That yeah. campus, it was, I mean, the where, where it's situated in the city, and mm -hmm. just the campus is cool. It's got a cool vibe. It's got some amazing history for, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, political history and, and just for, 
uh, it goes down in history for for what they were doing for those times. You know, the crazy '60s and '70s. It was yeah, an amazing true. place. So, well, yeah. I w- I want you to give us a little background about yourself, oh my and um, you know, my my first beef because you know I always got a beef. Always got a beef. You know, is you know, you know, do you always you know he got you know you look at brothers and they got certain things going for them. Now he got the voice. Yeah. The height, yeah. The speed, yeah. The personality, yeah. I can't see. You, you, you know. I cannot see. Okay, so that is well. You know, we, we all got glasses. Well, hey. on, yeah, but, but you know, he, he wasn't the brothers. You look at like really, you, you really go come out over here. Can you just stay over in your corner? But my beef is over now. Right. Uh, uh, uh Coach Cam- Campbell, I, I want to know. Uh, tell us the history of who you are, your accomplishments. Oh, and then what's going on in your life right now? Right. Well, Doc, I'm gonna tell you. I'm I'm I've been known amongst my personal friends as like a true life living Forrest Gump. I have I have seen it all, done it all, been around it when it happened. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, one day if I write a book, I have to make sure I have a great lawyer because I'll get I'll get sued for some of the things I see. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But but I mean, you know, I grew up in uh, what, what what was what originally was Compton, then mm-hmm. turned into Carson. You know, I got bused to a school, uh, L.A. Banning High School. Oh, Banning, with, uh, yes. We were great for Wait, football. you went to Banning? I went to Banning, yeah. Oh, I got a friend that went to Banning uh, and came to Berkeley. Nobles. Yeah. Uh, the Nobles. The yeah. Nobles family, yeah, because we all lived in D- uh, Delamo and got bused down to Banning and everything. Okay, yeah. okay. There's a few prominent families, and, and the Nobles are one of them. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, Freeman McNeil running back for... Uh, uh, the the uh, New York Jets, and mm-hmm. then we we had a lot of you know the Ferragamas. They all went there. So we had some good track know. teams in like recently. We had we, yeah recently, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean we were a, a football dynasty yeah, back yeah, in the seventies. Yeah, are they the light blue team? No, they were the red and black. Red and yeah. black. Yeah, because we it was uh, the light blue is Carson. Yes. Yes, because it was yes. Carson and Benny. We were arch rivals. Yes. Like, it's like. That that J C in uh, Westwood up in L A. Like Lincoln you know, and Morris. No, you know that that J C in in uh, in uh, in Los Angeles called uh, what's it called Ugla U C U C something or other. You know. Yeah, some U C L A. Something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. slow yeah. Robert Ernie. Right, yeah. 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 right. uh, right. We apologize. He's right. a little slow this morning. I was going. I was going to watch. I was like, well, I was trying to think. You know, it, it, a, a U S C person is not allowed to utter those words. Yeah. Or, you know those. Initials. Well, you guys got some yeah. there. So. But yeah, so I, I went to USC on a mm-hmm. full scholarship, mm-hmm. running track because I was not that good in football. I was third string receiver in football <laughs> uh, on one of the, on those great football teams, and I didn't like sitting on the bench. But my father didn't exactly like me sitting uh, at home doing nothing. Right. So uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm a baseball guy. Apparently, I'm not a football guy. That's good parenting. Let's go. Uh, let's let's go try track because pops wants me to do something. Yep. And I was too slow to be a, a, a sprinter. Not strong enough to, uh, to to throw the shot put and couldn't really jump or anything, and so I was running out of events. And the next day I know there's some hurdles there, and and I was like, oh, that's cool, you know, because the hurdles that you know for high school the low ones are you know kind of low. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I get chased by bullies all the time. I can jump over stuff, so right. no problem. And so, you know, it was great. So I I, I came out to the track team. I was going to do the lower hurdles, and then the uh, the captain of the team was kind of like the the local. Uh, you know, big man on campus, and uh, he was just like, you know what? Uh, we don't just do one event. You have to do both hurdles or no hurdles at all. Of course. And I was like, well, I guess I'm not on the team. And he said a couple of expletives, and uh, and he pushed me, and there was a hurdle right behind me, and I turned around to stop from falling, and I, I had either I was going to go through the hurdle or I jumped over, it, and it was the first time I went over a high hurdle. I was like, I can actually do I this. I can do this. Yeah. And that's how it actually happened. So you was bullied in the track? Bullied in the track. <laughs> see, see, there's a, there's a there's message a behind this. There's you. a message. You know, Some you people might, gotta push you into your destiny. And, and exactly. you might be bullied into something, right. but it can make you an Olympic champion. And yes, sir. It, and it did. It did, yeah. It was Man. the best decision made for me that I can definitely say. Besides that and, and uh Somebody choosing my wife for me on a blind okay. date. Well, wow. wait, 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 wait. We, we don't get to that. That's good. But so, 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 tell me this: Are you still friend with the bully that pushed you? Unfortunately, Curtis Perry died some years ago. I mean, oh, he wow. died a okay. few years after uh, he had a scholarship to Long Beach, and and he was one of the first people I know uh, uh, died of cancer. I had oh, a wow. stomach cancer, but yeah, he wow. was a great guy. 
we had, you know, a lot of great guys uh, from Banning High School, you know, God bless them all. They, some of them have passed on and everything, but uh, hey, God be the glory, you know, they're, right. they're in his presence, so yeah. that's the most important thing. So you, you talked about your dad, so uh, that, that's one of the few things that a lot of African American men can't always say that a mm. dad was present. Yeah. So let's talk He's about, you know, the uh, relationship of the father-son and the family dynamics that you grew up in. Oh, it was, it was paramount, and, and, and today, that lesson I got from having a, a, a two-parent home is so important to me as well, and that's why, you know, m you know, I'm there for my kids. Mm -hmm. And you know, my dad's still with us. My mom and dad's still with us. My dad's 80. Oh, I hope I don't get this right. 87. Wow. And uh, you know, and he, and, as a matter of fact, he was never an athlete because he just worked. He had to work from, 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 family. from mm -hmm. you know, from the age of eight years old or whatever. But uh, he always believed in in. Being there, I mean, he was, he worked, he, had, you know, we had our own businesses and stuff like that, but, you know, he was gone from five in the morning, but he'd be home by three, and we come home from school, and dad's there, and, you know, he'd help us with, with homework or get, making our chores get done, and, and uh, he would take me to practice, baseball, you know, baseball season, football season, my dad was there, my dad was a coach in baseball. And wow. you know, yeah, he didn't he didn't know that much about being a football coach, but he was there on the sidelines, you know, mm -hmm. for every That's game. Important. So it was important. I mean, I have I'm the second oldest of four kids, you know, I've, uh, two sisters, so it's girl boy, girl boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, you know, my my dad supported me and my brother, and my uh, my mom definitely take took my sisters to cheerleading practice and to uh, mm -hmm. ballet and whatever else they were doing. And even to this day, you know, they support my uh, my uh, uh, all their grandkids and. And uh, we have now two uh, uh, great grandkids, and uh, they support them as well. So, so, so I'm gonna wow. ask Cass this question because yeah. he said, "Boy, girl, boy, girl." So, <clears throat> when, when was the first time you got a, into a fight over your sister? Somebody coming at your sister wrong? <laughs> he wasn't a fighter, remember? I wasn't a fighter, but uh, <laughs> but, but no, but he said, "But, but you, know, uh, what, you, you know, know what?" You know what? But. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there are some dark stories. I mean, right. there, there was a young young man that, that made the fateful decision to not uh, show up to pick my sister up for a prom date. Uh -oh. And uh, I had to go find him and, mm -hmm. and uh, have a little chit-chat with him. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's, that's amazing because he's so, he's so, I'm telling you, Look. me a coach, he's so laid back. But, but see, I do have my dark side. You know, I mean, okay, well, I, we you, don't forget, you, forget, I, you forget I just said I grew up in Compton. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. Oh, you know, you have to survive. Gotta have something. So, you know, so there is, there is that part that's deep, deep, deep down repressed in me. So, right. you know, but uh, yeah, it, you know, but uh, that, that young man, um, uh, I don't changed think he his did. life. Did I changed his life. Hey, Amen. <laughs> you know, and here's my last question. I'm gonna step out the no, way. No, no, I love it. Okay, right. so so he, here's the thing. Take me to when you found out that you were going to the Olympics. Oh, you just my took goodness. what I was gonna oh, say. Oh my yeah. goodness. Well, there's actually video of it. Uh, you know, there's so many videos of on uh, YouTube. Oh yes. But, uh, but uh, Okay, so here's the deal. I'm actually a rare Olympian. Um, you know, three-time Olympian, as you said. You know, mm -hmm. I've been on three Olympic teams. There's three versions of the Olympics, if people mm -hmm. can remember that. Um, 1980 is the first team I made. I made it as a 19-year-old. A boycott. And that was a team that we didn't get to go. Right. The boycott year. Mm -hmm. So I make that team, and then the, the second Olympics, 84, the Eastern Bloc countries boycott us, so it's right. kind of a half Olympics. Right. And then, of course... Korea is the first time a, a complete Olympics I get to compete in. So I've had three different versions of Olympics. But but here's the deal. At 19 year olds, do you really do you really think you're gonna make the Olympic team? No. Not you, you're USA. thinking, you know, no, not for the USA. you I'm gonna get the experience, I'm gonna see what this is all about. By the time I'm twenty four, then I'll be ready. I stumbled on making an Olympic team in, at nineteen. I just I didn't even know how you made an Olympic team. I got a letter in the mail saying that I had qualified at some meet somewhere, you know, down the road that allowed me to go to the Olympic trials, and they would pay for my hotel, flight, and everything. And, and I was like, Coach, is this real? And he's like, yeah, you're invited to the Olympic trials up in Eugene, Oregon. So I, we go up there, and, and I say, okay, Coach, how's this go? He said, all right, I'm not going to explain it all. Just try to be in the top three in this first race. So, you know, because it's a limited four. I think we ran four rounds. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I run – the first, you know, first race, and and I and I set a personal record. Wow! And uh, and I'm in the top three. And he go, and I say, okay, all right, that was cool. Now what do I do? 
I said, keep doing that. <laughs> so the next round, top three again, top three. I run top three. I'm in the third place again. He's like, I was like, now what? He's like, you gotta keep doing that. You know, same thing. I said, like, then what happens? Says, you get you get to pass this next round, you'll be in the finals. And I said, then what happens? He said, that's when they choose the Olympic team. I was like, how well, how do they choose the Olympic team? Top three. Top three. <laughs> so right. I was like, okay, so if I run this. I'll be next... in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, <I'll think laughs> exactly. Well, so I'm like, I'm like, okay, so the semifinals I run. I think I came second. And wow. said in every round I ran a personal record. And so then the finals come on, that's what you can see on the, the uh, on YouTube is the final race. Um, and uh, I, I've run the race of my life. Wow, and I man, PR again and I come across the finish line. And the poor the poor guy who wins the race, Ronaldo Nehemiah. Oh, man. <laughs> it, it should be his glory. But I'm going crazy. I'm jumping all over the place. I'm on top of him. And I'm yeah. just having the greatest time in the world. And, and the next thing I know, I'm made, I make the Olympic team. And then I realize in that moment, hey, I make the Olympic team, but I don't get to go. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, there's a transition of Tony Campbell, the young kid, mm -hmm. and Tony Campbell, the quickly uh, 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 growing adult that understands politics and sports are intimately with, uh, woven mm -hmm. in, and you can't get away from the two <laughs> things. And so it be, it's become a, uh, a lifelong uh, you know, challenge to, to better the sport and to, to fight some of the political you know, battles that are within it. So it's, there are uh, a lot of them. Yeah, there are the a lot US of them. Side, yeah. especially. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, how, that's all how it all So when, when you made the Olympic team in 81 and you didn't go, but, 80, yeah. did, but, but did you get the paraphernalia? I got everything. You got it all. You know, that's that's the coolest part. He has, all, he has all the, a museum. All of you, exactly. All you guys listening out there, this is this is the one thing we you don't talk they don't talk about. Right. The swag, the gear you get for making these teams is unbelievable. I got some of it on right now. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean you got a piece of it, but yes. I mean, when you make an Olympic team, you get the clothes, you get the shoes, you get the hats. Carry but man. then you get the you get the toiletries and all the sponsor stuff. Yep. You get a huge suitcase full of goodies and watches and 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 all kinds of stuff, you know, from all these different sponsors, yes. cameras and and diamond rings and yes. all kinds of stuff. It's just and you just seriously, you just have all this stuff. When you leave, when you get to the Olympic trials, you have your one bag of your clothes and everything. You leave with three or four bags, and then <laughs> a couple other bags get shipped to you, you know. And then of course, if you make the Olympic team, you don't have a shoe contract. By the time you leave, a bunch of shoe comp companies are after you. So, and those yeah. are people that pay yeah. them, some of them, yeah. a monthly check yeah. representing their company, yeah. just Absolutely. in case people don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 you know, I, I ain't trying to get in your business, but yeah. who is your sponsor? Who was your sponsor at the time? <laughs> well, you know, right now I'm sponsored you super, by super. Nike. <laughs> okay. I'm sponsored by Nike, yes. So, I, I was, right uh, now? Nike, right, as, as we speak. Well, I, well. I am a Nike coach. Now, what y'all don't know is, did yeah. you have a gla eyeglasses? Type thing because remember you used to you were known for wearing my goggles his goggles like that. if you go back and look at his pictures he wore goggles very unique style <laughs> I, you know what I don't know why people always bring these dang goggles up I only wore unique. goggles one time man I had I had glasses and they were the old school schoolboy glasses you know the big ones you know like the hobo Kelly kind of glasses right. <laughs> he was a nerd <laughs> I had those because I I am I am almost legally blind and see right. <laughs> but. Uh, but you know, and and I I have worn contacts in races before, but they're not comfortable, and so you know because they make me blink a lot. And when you got ten hurdles coming at oh, you, you at can't blink, bro. twenty something miles an hour, you need to see them things. The wrong time. You know, so, <laughs> so, but uh, no, yeah, I I uh, I've I've had contracts with Nike, Adidas, um, Puma was my first contract, uh, but my longest and most fulfilling contract was with actually with an Italian shoe company called Diodor Shoes. Most of the pictures you'll see. I'm wearing Diodor shoes. There are very few pictures. I don't think there are any pictures that exist with me wearing Puma. There might be a couple of collegiate pictures with me with Adidas. Uh, and at the end of my career, I went back to Nike for two years because uh, I got a deal with my first my first wife and me got a package deal. Uh, but she was uh, an athlete as well. She was. Uh, yeah, she was uh, went to the World Championships in 1993. Yeah, she's a hurdler. Wow, yeah. a hurdler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, it's like, ooh, I, I want her. She she can jump. <laughs> so how was it when you? Made your first Olympic team yeah. at 19 and then went back to college. 
Because you were still you still had to compete in college as well. Well, like I said, I, when I when I opened this up, I said I was kind of like the Forrest Gump. <laughs> you know, I've 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 had a wayward career. I mean, yeah, I mean, I was I was actually a, uh, a pre med student at USC, and, uh, and I was actually pretty. I was uh, pledging a fraternity. I'm an alpha, and so uh, we need to talk because I want to go grad. Is that right? Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've always wanted to. They wanted me in college, but okay. I was afraid to get beat up. We'll definitely talk. No, get yes, I will. We don't beat anybody. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah, <anyway. laughs> but hey, Paul, uh, okay. So so what happened was there. So I'm in my sophomore year. I make my Olympic team. Immediately the, that that next day. I'm flown to Europe to start competing, you know. That's where they make money. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to Europe and still not understanding what's going on. I, I get to Europe to London's my first race, and this guy gives me an envelope of $700, and he's like, this is for you. And I'm like, well, who do I give this to? And he's like, that's yours. I'm like, for what? He's like, for running, stupid. <laughs> so nobody, <laughs> like, nobody I haven't even run you? yet. Nobody went with you like no, a, uh, no, a coach no. or an my, agent? My agent, had a, he had another group. Uh, and I, at that time, I was with the Muhammad Ali Track Club, if you could believe that. I've heard of it. Yeah. And so uh, so he, Hilton Nicholson was his name, and he went to another meet and sent me to England by myself. A 90-year-old. And so I'm picking up this check, thinking I got to give it to him or something right. or whatever, you know, for paying for my play. He's like, no, this is your appearance fee. Now, if you win or come first, second, third, Bonus. you get more money. Mm -hmm. And then, and then that, that turned out to be one of my smallest paydays that season by the time the season was over i was making a thousand dollars a race and i was racing like three like three days a week or something like that and wow. you know as a 19 year old i'm making you know you know what eight nine ten thousand dollars a week or a month you know yeah so it's, it was it was a good life you know? right <laughs> was really especially for and a, a now 19, 19 year old. but you know obviously later in my career i was making quite a bit more so, right because uh, the bigger you get in track and field the more yeah they, but uh, give you the but incentive. so 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 now the problem is i'm still in college so yes. I, I made it back for my junior year on time and mm -hmm. and then now i'm pledging fraternity i'm i'm you know i'm running track mm -hmm. i'm trying to be a pre-med student mm -hmm. I'm having been exposed to the world and saying, you know what? Do I really want to be a doctor? I don't know. But uh, so, so things kind of kind of went wayward. And uh, by the end of my uh, junior year, uh, USC and me had a little chit chat, and, and they asked me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, got you. I, they uh -huh. asked me to leave and say, you know, you need to come back, and when you're more when you're serious, because <laughs> <laughs> that's a good school now. Because my GPA went from three point eight down to two point something, and, and because you were traveling, so I was people traveling. Don't realize yeah, a I, I didn't old. get back. It, it, uh, uh, I got it back a month later after because you were still started. traveling, yeah. making your money as a professional athlete. But but you know I gotta ask this question. Yeah, but I did go back and graduate. Yeah. Now, now <laughs> you graduated from USC. Yes, I did. Um, <clears throat> you're 19 years old. You're making paper. Uh, people know your name. So how did you manage uh, your, your your social life at that point? Well, <laughs> I okay. I, I had the I had the greatest roommate in the world. His name was Mylon Stewart, and Mylon was a wild boy, but I was the quiet boy. So we kind of I kind of mellowed him out, and he kind of got me out of my shell. You know, I had one steady girlfriend, and and we were we were we had given ourselves to to the Lord, so we weren't really doing anything, right. and and you know, praise and, praise and, and she, yeah, exactly. Right. So she she kept me uh, she kept me grounded, and mm -hmm. uh, and and. She actually was one of the biggest uh, supporters of me. I mean, to be honest, my real name is Anthony. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the, the, you know, the nickname for Anthony is Tony. Right. But I spell my name T-O-N-I-E, and that's because she, she said, you know what, you're going to be famous one day, and you need to have a different name. Yep. And so we, she came up with, I'm going to start spelling your name this way, and I think you should adopt it because you're going to be famous and it's going to work for you. And, you know, clairvoyant that she must have been or whatever or, or maybe it was a heavenly sign but right. it has worked and uh and so you know god bless her so track is taking you all over the world all what, is, what are some of your world. favorite yeah. places you know i have seen i've seen the, the the most amazing things and i've seen the most heartbreaking things i've seen extreme poverty in italy in, in the in the india you know i've seen amazing natural beauties in Switzerland and, and uh, you know, Germany. I've made amazing friends all over the world. 
I've seen the northern lights up and way up in, you know, uh, in, in Finland. Wow. Uh, I've been to Russia, I've been to Africa, I've been to the motherland, and that was a heck of experience. I've been there a few times. Great islands. Um, uh, I've been to over 60 countries, so it's, uh, you know, it's still growing to this day. The track and field was good to you. Oh, it's very good. It still has been. Yeah, and and that's been. why you, yeah. you give so much to what, what yeah. you do, because many of you don't know, he's the head track and field coach at Southwestern Community College, but you also started coaching where? I was at, uh, I coached at USC for four years, and then uh, had great success. Uh, and then I've been a private coach, you know, off and on for, and still now I'm working with Olympic uh, athletes, uh, working with Scout Bassett, uh, Megan Abson, and uh, uh, Isaac John Paul. They're Paralympic athletes, and mm -hmm. I've worked with several of uh, uh, Paralympic athletes. Uh, Roland Slade, uh, his dad is a, a pastor here yes. in town, uh, and uh, worked with, with uh, his son. Uh, but I've worked with a lot of Olympic athletes there. I was formerly the uh, the managing director of the Olympic Training Center for track and field, so for, for five years. So. so this is one of the things that you know you you had a stellar career. You're still into you're still into the uh, track and field. You're an influencer in track and field. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things that people don't talk about, and that is that you ever experience injury where you oh, had to rehab. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's part another part of my story. I mean. I had a long career. Most during my time, most athletes were retired and, and gone by 23, 24, which is incredibly young now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I lasted till I was 32. I retired. You know, I made my first team at 19, retired at 32. Wow. But in between there, I had pulled hamstrings, you know, ankles, and more more significantly, I blew out my uh, my knee when I when I ran uh, in 1985. I was, uh, and that's a great story. In 1985, I accepted a race in Trinidad, you know, Trinidad, Tobago, mm -hmm. and it was a big meet because the president was going to, President Trinidad was going to be there. So we had all these Olympians, all these celebrities there, and so I was paid to run the the, the high hurdles, my specialty. Mm -hmm. And Edwin Moses, you know, the great yes, Edwin Moses wonder. was uh, was uh, uh, going to run the 400 hurdles against a bunch of Olympians, but he had a severe allergy attack and was had to go to the hospital. And so, 2 in the morning, the meat promoters are knocking on my door going, Tony, you know, Edwin Moses is sick. We need to fill this lane. We can't have an empty lane, and he's the headliner. We heard that you ran the 400 hurdles in, in college, and would you would you run for him? I'm like, yeah, if you pay me. Right, you know? right, <laughs> so, right, right. And they're like, okay, we'll pay you the same amount of money. So I was like, cha-ching, I'm going to get paid double money. And, I can, wow. you know? and so, so I'm like, no problem. So, so here, the 400 hurdles, people that are listening know that, that, that race is the toughest race oh, in track man. and field. And you just don't step in it uh, after three-year layoff and, and think you can do something. Right. You have to actually train, train for that yes. race. So the last race I ever ran was at, against uh, UCLA and Andre Phillips. You know, the, 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 the famous the Olympic, the Olympic gold medal, future Olympic gold medalist mm -hmm. I had run against. That's the last person I ran against. And and so I was like, okay, I can 13-step, you know, these hurdles. I'll, I can 13-step for... You know, seven, eight hurdles, and we'll see. And then, you know, that's my same race plan. I'll, I'll go out with that same race plan. So, I come out the blocks. I'm going. I'm in my race, the 13 step stride pattern. And I'm actually looking around and I'm winning. You know, so the fifth hurdle, I'm still winning. And I got all these other, you know, real good guys, other Olympians in the race. And I'm like, okay, let me, yeah, I'm feeling good. 13 steps to six hurdle. I'm like, okay, getting a little tired. Okay, let's see if I go one more. Didn't make it. You know, so, Did you get the hurdle? <laughs> seventh hurdle, I, I was. Didn't quite make it. My foot caught on the hurdle, and but my body kept going, and so I ripped and tore my my knee just completely apart. Running a race that wasn't even his race. Yep. So in the end, I didn't get paid for either one of them. So, <laughs> yeah. But you didn't get paid for, for competing paid. in the race. Mm -hmm. No, I got a medevac home and surgery a few hours later. That's what I got. And then when the, they said I probably never run again because they hadn't seen that kind of damage before. But now here's. Here's when you when you when you ask me about my faith and you ask me about you know how God has blessed me. I mean, obviously He's blessed me with a talent, mm -hmm. but in that moment, there's you know the best doctors in the world. I mean, these were the doctors that 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 were USC doctors. I mean, because yeah. thank God I had that connection. Right. You know, these guys came out of surgery and like Tony, we haven't seen this type of damage to even football players, and we don't think you'll ever run again. We think you'll have a decent life and be able to jog and be able to play with your kids one day, but right. you know your career is over. And I just remember waking up out of anesthesia, and my mom was by my bedside. She was crying, and I was like, "Oh man, this is not good." Right. And so, 
And then, so I went back to sleep, but when I woke back up again, and she's like, okay, Tony, this is what happened. They, they, your nerve was torn. That's why you didn't have the pain, but you had all the swelling because you had all this damage, da, da, da. They don't think you'll ever win again. And I was like, I'm not trying to hear that. And so USC allowed me to come there for rehab. I, I had rehab for five to seven hours a day, six days a week. Wow. And, and that was in April. And... I ran my first race in June, and I ran super slow, but I finished it. You know, I three-stepped the whole way. I think I ran 14.5, 14.7, right. something like that. Didn't even make it out the first round. Three months later, I was world champion. Yeah. So, so uh, you've been a world champion, too? Yeah. Oh, a three-time world champion. What? That's <laughs> something I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three-time world champion. Okay, yeah. so so I'm going to get down to this. Now, how many children do you have right now? Four. Okay, four. so you have four, just like your mom and dad, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, how many boys, how many girls? I have three boys that eat me out of house and home, uh-huh. and I have one daughter, yes. Oh, that daughter's protected, ain't she? She is very much protected. So let me ask you this question. <laughs> how do your children see daddy? <laughs> That's a question. You know what? I don't know if you guys have been watching The Last Dance, you know, the whole thing with Michael Jordan, all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. I mean, I bet you my kids treat me like they treat him. They're like, he's just dead. You know? It's like, you know, like, I have all these Olympic medals, all these artifacts from all over the world, and they're like, yeah, you know, that's just dead, you know. I mean, they know what who I am. They know what I've done, but they don't give a, a bean about it. Yeah. <laughs> you right, know? right. You know, they don't care. You know, they're like, I'm just dead, you know. And even my wife, she just, she keeps me in my place. She's just like, yeah, I know you're an Olympian. I mean, I hear once in a while she'll introduce somebody. I'll say, yeah, you know, somebody asked about you, and I told them who you are, what you do, blah, blah, blah. But she's like, she's like, yeah, yeah, you're Olympian. Go do the dishes. You know, that's right. Right. Wow. Now, now what, what people don't know about you, too, is that you had um, the honor, and I think it was God sent for you to coach one of the top community college sprinters in in the history of Absolutely. California Absolutely. and probably the country. Absolutely. Let's talk about Curtis Mitchell. Curtis Woo! Mitchell. Curtis the Mitchell. The knucklehead I, you know, god brother of mine. <laughs> I love that boy. I yes. love that boy. And he, and he is right now on an amazing journey himself. And, yes. And he's finally healthy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he posts all the time, has a little clothing company. And, and it would have been great to see what he was going to do this year. But, um, you know, COVID took... Uh, Took that uh, season away from all of our great athletes. Right. So, uh, uh, so twenty twenty one is the hopefully going to be uh, his debut uh, back into track and field. Curtis Mitchell came out to uh, California to run, uh, yes. to not to run for us, but Played to play football. football. Right. And the uh, the football coach uh, basically said, you know what? He's uh, got amazing speed, but his hands yeah. aren't there. Right. And uh, maybe you could do something with yep. him. And, and it was uh, we took him from eleven four sprinter down to ten two and twenty, uh, 20 he ran twenty two two down to no yeah he ran twenty two two down to twenty point five five yeah yes so, yeah, so. and this is at the southwestern college of yeah, San Diego yeah. which has a legendary yeah. um, track program for men yeah. people really don't know unless you were here in the seventy eighties that was like a powerhouse in the state of California now you also have some books. Let's talk about that uh, aspect that absolutely. people don't know about. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm a, a two-time published author, and uh, uh, my first book was actually at one Children's Book of the Year Award uh, in 2003. It's called The Highest Stand. Uh, it's a pseudo-biography, I guess. You know, it's a, a fantasy tale, pseudo-biography. You, all, you always, as a uh, an author, you always covet what you see. Your first book is always close to who you really are. And so, uh, it's done very well. It's a it's a young adult children's book, uh, and it's it's in all fifty states. It's actually been translated uh, uh, into a couple different languages. Uh, produced by a local company called Scobray Press here, and um, uh, it's done very well. And then the uh, my second book called Just Run. Uh, it was a little bit more adventurous book, uh, published by the uh, uh, the Tape uh, Publishing Company, which is a uh, a Christian book company. Um, it's not done as well because I haven't really marketed or ha- they haven't marketed as well, but it's done okay. But it's it dealt with some more adult uh, 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 topics, uh, and, you know, uh, dealt with divorce, dyslexia, disability, and, and uh, acceptance and some, some, some rather challenging concepts for a young adult uh, to, to try to get through. But 
but you know it's it's accepted as well. So I'm I'm happy, and I'm actually working on a few other things. Wow. Well. I'm going to ask my final question then, Robert, because I, I see that we're two minutes over here. So we're going to let him go. No, we're okay. We're going to let him go. We're okay. The busy man. Let me ask you this question. Yeah. Uh, life experience. Uh, you, you're you a son, mother, and father. You are a husband. You have children. Uh, Three-time Olympian, world champion, traveled all over the world. I'm a young sprinter or track athlete at this point. Um, give me some words of wisdom that can help me no matter if I make the Olympic trials or not. Mm. What would you tell those young people today? I get those questions all the time or get, uh, get the opportunity to, to be uh, blessed with, with those young kids coming to me asking those advice. And, and, and I use my own self as, as the, the answer to those questions. And I tell them, I said, look at me. I have two arms, two legs, just like you. Yeah, I'm 6'3", you know, quite a bit heavier now than I was. But when I first made my first Olympic team, I was still growing. You know, I was only, you know, 6'1", or, or uh, and 145 pounds, and I grew into the, into the champion that I mm-hmm. did. But more importantly, I trusted God. You know, I trusted God, and I realized that I was not in the driver's seat. I was actually a passenger on this amazing ride, and I'm still taking that ride. When I learned to give him the glory, when I le- let him take over the driving, the driving the duties, it becomes a cool, great, amazing trip. And, and I tell all my kids, I say, look, you know what? Nobody really knows what's in store for you. Will you, in fact, become that Olympic athlete? You, you know, you have to give it your best because if God gave you the talent, and we all have been given talent, mm-hmm. you know, it's your duty to do your best. It's your duty to, to try your hardest and to see what, what you get back out of it. You know, but if not, learn from your experience because you might not be the, the Olympic champion in the future, but you might be the Olympic champion coach in the future. So, you know, I try to get all the kids to just enjoy the ride because not everybody's going to make an Olympic team. But this sport can take you around the world. This sport can, can introduce you to your future wife. This sport can, could uh, uh, expose you to just amazing things. And, you know, health, welfare, mental health, mm-hmm. you know, it could, you know and, and, and some prosperity, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know, it could, it could pay for your education. And that, more importantly, is the most important thing that I try to, to, to impart upon my Southwestern College athletes is that use the sport and the talent that was given yes, you to get a free education. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Because nowadays education is is outpricing them ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, for kids, and it's really becoming a burden on parents to, to be able to, to afford these things. But you can't compete unless you have education. That's right. You know, so use that talent. Student Even, athlete. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And most mm-hmm. most importantly, in that order. Right. You know. So, but yeah. So I try to just give them the opportunity that I will never say that they can't do something. You know, my my sister coach, uh, and I love him to death, hopefully he's listening, uh, Adam Henderson, yes. the father of that's Monique my, Henderson. That's my daddy in training. Yeah, so he's he's a little bit more the, the uh, pragmatist, the, the more realist. He's just like, Tony, I don't know why you always tell every athlete they can make the Olympic team. You know, they can't. <laughs> right. And right. I'm like, you know what? Somebody oh. was probably oh. one, told me I couldn't make it, but I did. I was like, you oh. know, I, you know I, it, they, you never know what, what's in store for a person, and you just have to give them opportunity to find that out for themselves. You, you know, one of the things, you, you, you alluded to this, but I, I think it's really important because I share this with young people all the time. There are the people that are on the Olympic team that are on the track. Can you talk about the other jobs that put you on the Olympic team that takes you to the Olympics that is just as important to the success. Well, well I've yes, been sir. I've been those as well. You know, yes. I mean, I mean, even though I have been a you know former athlete as an Olympic athlete, I've also given my my time and talents to serving the Olympians. And I was mm-hmm. uh, for several years uh, on the manager pool for the Olympics. I became one of the team managers. And there's coaching pools. There's mm-hmm. officials. There's you know there's uh, besides officials there's you know, individuals that work meets. That's volunteers. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, I know we're talking about eight years from now, but the Olympics are coming in 2028. And and I'm telling you, I was alive in, in, at the L.A. Olympics in, mm-hmm. in 1984. Wow. There were 
hundreds of thousands of volunteers needed mm -hmm. and they all got uniform yes. they all got you know amazing he you know, wrote experience. me a letter of recommendation because yeah. okay. what y'all don't know is that i applied for this year's mm -hmm. and this man was gracious enough mr coach pool mm -hmm. it was another good friend of his who was over the olympic training center as well they were nice enough to write yeah. recommendations for me yeah it's, it's yeah. going to be an amazing experience I mean, because if you look at the olympic history 1984 was the first profitable Olympics, and it wow. hasn't been won since. They still have an endowment from that Olympics mm -hmm. in the year 2000, mm -hmm. you know, from you know, that's still paying for kids, you know, youth programs, stuff like that all across the country. You know, wow. LA 84 is still paying for a lot of stuff because mm -hmm. they made so much money. And I'm pretty sure that group 2028 is going to do the same thing, if not bigger and better. Right. It's going to be an amazing experience. And some of those events, like in LA uh, 84, we're held down here in San Diego. I mean, yeah. the equestrian, the, yes. you know, some stuff like that. They're going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of a need for 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 volunteers. And so if you're not on the track, you can be, you know, in the in the medical. You could be in the you could be part of the management team. You can be hospitality. Mm -hmm. You can be, you know, officials. You can mm -hmm. be. There's so many things ways you can stay in this sport mm -hmm. and get something out of it. Yes. You know? Well, you know, um, I know that this won't be the first time that we uh, have you on. No, because we got so much more. <laughs> we, we got, but we, we even got to talk about the ministry. You can no, ordain yeah. elder, and you know and about all, that. Uh, all, so, all, all you can ordain for it. Oh, you know, Universal uh, Church. You know. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. But so, I, I have married five people, and uh, uh -huh. I don't have, told on you. Who did? Or is Sean? Yeah. Oh, did you? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> but we, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it all. We're gonna figure yeah. out how Robert Earl Dean and I could be reporters on the on on the field and everything Absolutely. with the Robert Earl Dean. But hey, this, well, that's this, how I know him. I mean, this this man is connected. I recruit. I recruit for him. He recruits for okay, me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He he brings me some of the top athletes. You know. I I believe in this man, and, I, and I'm not just saying it for. And for he's unselfish. I give him that way. He's unselfish. This, this he he man. definitely helps Southwestern. But he helps other schools too. He and and I appreciate that. And I, I have love no track problem. and field. I'm a yeah, diehard track yeah. and field. Yes, I love to sing, y'all. I love to do radio. Yes, he does. My biggest <laughs> love is track and field. I'm gonna be honest. Absolutely. That's he, only he's because he's wearing USA track and field stuff right I now. I did it in honor of my brother right here. <laughs> That's only because he lived in Babis and he had to run home every day. I was a church boy. I didn't have to to, to. to use the restroom. <laughs> no, sir. I, I'm mad at you. I didn't bro. have to. I, I went that, to Lincoln High School. That's, how, that's <laughs> how I learned how to do hurdles. Right. Man, having to run home. Our, similar environment. <laughs> Exactly. But I was a church boy, so people respected me. They yeah, exactly. me. Exactly. And, and, and see, you know, we have this thing that says save but not soft. See, he was a church boy, but they didn't want them hands. Robert had some hands. Can, Everybody don't know, but Robert had some hands. I fight for Jesus, though. Well, uh, uh, the world champion, the three-time Olympic... Uh, 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 huh? Three-time Olympic hurdler. Yeah, three-time Olympic hurdler. Uh, ordain, uh, minister, Arthur, author, pilot. Did he say pilot? pilot? Yes, I'm he loves planes. Too, man, man. Uh, I'm a pilot too. Yeah. Look, look, I, I need to take a trip. Right I'm quick. telling you, man. I'm, tell, I'm, I'm the the black forest going to go, man. man. <laughs> I mean, I do all sorts of yes, stuff. Yes, he does. Man, 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 man we we, we got to bring him back. I'm an expert. We have to. Uh, this, this man I'm is a so pseudo expert uh, horse rider, man. I told you he he does. I'm telling this man is. Amazing, and and he knows. I, I have had a, a blessed life. Yes. I have had a blessed life, and I'm enjoying it. I really and and he's nice. Yeah. One thing about this track and field world, you got some mean people, mm -hmm. and you got some nice ones. This man is respected all over the world as a nice that. man. And I'm, I'm telling you what I hear from people. Mm -hmm. Him and my sister, um, Sheila Burrell, who we talked to mm -hmm. from San Diego State, they're known. They beat people. People respect them because they're nice, though. Mm -hmm. They beat you and stuff. But they're nice. You, young man, I um, just want to let you know that <laughs> today you suck, but uh, tomorrow you're going to be okay. No, he'll never say that. that you know, no. I just want you to know. He's always that, optimistic. If you come back on the check with that cheeseburger one more time, we're going to sit you down but on you the know, pitch. But you know, Doc, so Robert and Doc, what he just said is closer to the truth than not. <laughs> Rashad can probably, uh, can probably agree that. There, there are times that I, I'll be honest with I'm going, you know, that just didn't work. <laughs> that just, you know, that was a terrible race. What he's tough. Thinking, he, he's tough. Yeah, but, you know, but but I, I've learned to balance it. Yes. You know, I, I'll, I'll, but see, I had a coach that was, my coach was the very first day I met my coach who recruited me. What was his name? Ken Matsuda. You know, he's still alive. You know, I talked to him just a couple of days ago. 
He, you know, great guy. Had to, actually, he was the person who discovered O.J. Simpson and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, so was he the coach at USC? At USC, yeah. So this he man won a bunch of championships because oh, yeah. oh, people yeah. don't know a USC men's oh, track yeah. team oh, has yeah. won the World most Rutgers NCAA Absolutely. track championships than any other school. Absolutely. Arkansas is not the one. Absolutely. Arkansas's coach won in cross country in track and field. Yeah, no, but track and field, hands down, Wolf, was Kim USC. Matsuda. 32 yeah. championships, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. So, so the, when he recruited me, and the first day we went to work out together, he's like, we need to get something straight right now. And he, he never called me by my first name. He always called me just Campbell. Hey, Campbell, we need to get something straight. He says, I want you to look at me. And he was like five, six, eight, you know, a little Japanese guy. Right. He's like, he's like, do you see any pom-poms? I was like, no, pom-pom, no. I said, like, do you see a tutu on me? He said, I said, no, of course not. He said, then I want you to understand something. I'm not a cheerleader. I'm a coach, and I'm going to tell you what you're doing wrong mm-hmm. before I'm going to tell you what you're doing right. right. You know, And I'm not going to be the one that's going rah, 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 because we got work to do. We wow. got to get you to be, become a champion, and so we don't have time to give you fluffy you know, praise, stuff right. like that. And I was like, okay. And, that's, and unfortunately, or fortunately enough for a lot of my athletes, that's the type of athlete, that, uh, coach I am. I'm like, you know, I'm not a cheerleader all the time. I'm going to tell you what you did wrong mm-hmm. and what you did right, mm-hmm. you know, and then we're going to move on, and then I'm going to say, well, good job anyway. Hey, we'll get it next time, champ. And, you know, so a lot of my athletes appreciate that. I'll, I've had to learn to be a little softer because sometimes, you know, I'm a little too technical, a little too critical, but, uh, uh, but you know, I think I'm fair, you know. Amen, amen. Yes. One, one of the things, that I, I literally just met you today, and I feel like um, we've been friends forever, and I think right. that that, that is an amazing uh, uh, characteristic that uh, people have, that the minute that you, you kind of meet them, there, there's an actual connection and a draw. Uh, we're so blessed. We want you to know that GOD Radio Honored is your home. Yes. Uh, anytime you want to come back, talk about books, talk about life, bring your children in, or even bring in some athletes. And we can, I, I love doing the thing where we bring in the young athletes uh, to help them learn how to do interviews and how to, oh, to cool. speak. Yeah. Uh, so definitely know. Um, and my sister in law is at Southwestern College, yeah. uh, Maisha Jackson. Okay. Uh, uh, she's one of the deans and one of the directors over there. I, I've and, seen her emails. I don't think yeah. I've ever met her in person. Well, I'm going to make sure yeah. she reaches out to you yeah. and everything like that. But uh, a lot of good things are happening in Southwestern College. And for mm-hmm. them to have an Olympic uh, champion and everything of that nature as a part of their program, uh, they're very, very blessed. Y'all check this man out. Get How his book. You? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Facebook. Facebook. Tony yeah. Campbell Facebook. Tony Tony Campbell. Uh, I I I I have a Twitter. I'm still trying to figure out what Twitter is right. all about. Right. I use it. Don't have an Instagram. I got too many stuff going right. on. But mm-hmm. but no. If you if uh, prodigy coaching is also yes. something we do uh, when I work with pr- uh, uh, yes. private clients. Uh, mm-hmm. Prodigy coaching. As um, uh, soon as COVID's over, we'll we'll probably start working with a lot of kids again. Right. Uh, but we're down in South Bay, but yet we travel. So yes. yeah, just. You know, you could always reach us through Gene, uh, Earl Dean here, and, yes. uh, Coach Dean, and yes. and uh, you know now my my new friend who said he beat me uh, in know, his Dr. mind, Thomas, right? In <laughs> his mind, in, 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 in my dream, <laughs> in my dream, my lean, you know. Uh, that, that helped that a dog was chasing me, you know, in, in the dream. That, that's why I kept on hop, hopping over the hurdles. I think I had the same dream. <laughs> right, and, and those of you out there. Text and email Southwestern presidents. We can get this man a track. Yeah, yeah they deserve a track. Yeah. They built the, the stadium. They built the new Notch Center with basketball and all that exactly. stuff. They built the Map Center. He deserves a track. This I man has taken little years, and made ain't had a much. Track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys can help push it. The, they ain't gave you a track. No, I'm serious. I've had all let's, the success let's, let's without, a without a track. Without a track. They've had to travel other places. Yeah. Well, it is. It's a shame for the kids. I mean, it really, is. You know, because there's a lot of kids that, that are come. putting their faith in me to. Yeah. to help them get to the next level, mm-hmm. and they, they're excited, and they're like, okay, coach, where are we going to work out? I'm like, this is it. You know, we don't have a track. You know, and so wow. we have to beg, borrow, and steal from other high schools that have been very So uh, we can, we can help there. do what he yeah. can't do. Yeah. We, can, we can make some noise with the presence because yeah. people's yes. voices matter when it comes to dollars and all that kind of stuff. So all you that are listening or watching, reach out to Southwestern College's president, and mm-hmm. let's push, mm-hmm. let's, let's, let's move it. Yeah, we'll do a video. I want to run. But I don't have no track. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's done great things. And we thank, we thank my cousin Terry 
Dave is behind this great Absolutely. man. Um, he was a visionary. It was, it was his That's vision that got the football field done and the Notness Center and the Olympic um, pool because that was got a lot some of great stuff done over at Quinn Maca too. And he got some stuff done at yeah. Quinn Maca. And I remember him yeah. telling me about his That's vision. And Terry's my guy. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a man. Hope you and Virginia, uh, Terry, if you're listening, hope you guys are healing. Yes. Uh, I know you had some difficulties recently, you right. know, with the. Uh, with your knees and your hips and stuff like that, I'm right there oh, with you, brother. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. This is Tommy Kelly. I'm going to play this song for you because I yeah, think do that, that. Yeah. This, this, this is what uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Lord said uh, when, you, when you was running and everything. He said something like this. 